Warning, this video contains some actions that may not be safe. Please be cautious and we claim no responsibility for any injuries obtained from following the instructions presented in this video. The unsuspecting father pulls weeds, but yet did he know he was being watched. Oh! Hey guys, in this video we'll be showing you how to build this marshmallow gun, the beautiful culmination of about eight months of work and the reason why I haven't been releasing any videos. So this is the marshmallow gun version 1.1 and it has two chambers. It has about 40 shots with a magazine of 25 marshmallows, which is a foot long, one foot barrel, two 9 volt batteries as power. I seem to be getting a minimum of 50 yards of range with these marshmallows, which seems to be the max you can go because as your chamber runs low on air, you still get pretty consistent range. I think it's just because that the marshmallows just don't have enough mass to go any further. You can also fill this magazine with paintballs, although I've never tried it. I just know that they fit because I had an invention earlier that kind of did that. And yeah, so you got full auto and semi-auto functions, and this is going to be the newest thing in marshmallow warfare. Before we start building, it is important to understand which chamber you want. As of now, I have two main designs, single and double. The single chamber design is just as the name implies, a 12 inch long by 2 inch in diameter single chamber. If you are looking for a light gun that can be easily held and operated by children as young as 10, the smaller chamber is probably best for you. When pressurized to 110 psi, the recommended amount, you should get around 30 to 35 good semi-automatic shots off using a 220 microfarad capacitor for timing. Don't worry about this right now, we'll cover that in our next video, so stay tuned. You should also be able to reliably drain at least one 12 inch mag in a full auto mode. This is something around 20 marshmallows, depending on which brand you buy. As for the double chamber design, it is similar to the single chamber one except it has a second chamber on top. This makes the gun significantly more heavy to the point where you probably don't want to use it if you were younger than 13 because it's quite tiresome to lug around during a battle. With 110 PSI and a 220 microfarad timing capacitor, you should get around 60 to 70 good semi-automatic shots off before you run out of air. If you are efficient about it, you should be able to drain at least two 12-inch mags in full auto mode before running out of air also. Because it's heavier, it is more susceptible to damage, so you just want to make sure that you treat it with respect and don't drop it from a high height onto the handle, which is the most fragile part. So now that you understand the types of chambers, it's time to get building. For the first step, you'll need to prepare your parts. You want to start off by cutting two 12 inch lengths of 2 inch PVC pipe for your upper and lower chambers. Make sure to remove any PVC bits left over after sawing to ensure that your solenoid valve does not clog. Next, take your two lengths of 2 inch PVC and flatten each end with a disc sander. Then you can take a cordless rotary tool and slightly chamfer the edges of your pipe. To prepare your rear 2 inch socket cap, drill an M12 hole in the top with a step drill bit. These are the cheapest. If you will be using a quick release with threads of anything other than M13, make sure to use the appropriate drill bit. Now tap the hole using an M13 tap with a 1.5mm pitch if you are using a cheap Chinese quick release at the end. If you are using otherwise, tap the hole appropriately. Okay, for the first step we're going to want to build our chamber. And for this you want to use a respirator and safety glasses. Even if you're in a well ventilated area, a respirator is important because you do not want to accidentally inhale any fumes if your face happens to get close to whatever you're gluing. And safety glasses are also always important because you do not want any glue to get in your eyes accidentally. I'm not sure how that could happen, but it very realistically could. You are also going to need all of your 2-inch PVC pipe. That includes your three 2-inch couplers, your 2-inch end cap tapped with an M13 tap, and your reducer which goes from 2 inches to 1 half inch threaded. It doesn't matter how it does it. All that matters is that it goes to 1 half inch threaded. For this one I'm using a 2 to 3 quarters threaded which then goes from 3 quarters threaded to 1 half threaded. The reason why I'm doing this is Home Depot does not have a 2 inch to 1 half inch threaded reducer so it doesn't really matter how you get there just make sure it goes to 1 half threaded because that's what your solenoid valve connects to. You're also going to need your 
two inch to one half inch reducers um, for the back of your gun to connect to both of your chambers if you are doing that design. And your one half inch elbows here, which once again are necessary if you are doing the dual chamber design. You will also need your two main chambers here if you are building the dual chamber design. These are 12 inches long and two inches. You also need some duct tape so if your chamber explodes, it will not shrapnel, although that is very unlikely to happen. Also, you will need your PVC primer and PVC cement along with your female NPT slash quick connect slash quick release valve here. And I'm using this one, it is not standard, it's actually a super cheap Chinese one, it's only like two bucks. I strongly suggest using them though because these standards here in America are very hard to connect and are extremely annoying and these are just super easy to use. You also need some plumber's tape if you plan to connect your quick release valve to the back of your two inch cap. And that is only if it's threaded. If you don't plan to use any plumber's tape and you didn't spend the $11 or whatever to get that tap, you can use some grill glue and just grill glue it in. Although I strongly suggest avoiding that solution because if you happen to drop your gun on the back, it could possibly rupture the seal. And that means you have to saw off the back of your chamber, which loses you space. It's really, you don't want to go through that. So now that we got all of our parts, we can get to assembling. We are going to be building essentially this at the end if you're doing the dual chamber design. For the single chamber design, it's the same thing as a dual chamber, except it just has one chamber at the bottom with an end cap here uh, with the quick release at the end. And the reason you'd want to do a single chamber is A, it's cheaper, and B, it's lighter. This thing is actually quite heavy and it's a little bit bulky when running around, but I'm building all of mine with two chambers because two is better than one. Um, you're also going to need a little two inch connector piece if you're doing the two chamber design, which we'll use to connect to your two street elbows here to join them. And I will be using the clear PVC cement and the purple primer. And these come in a combo pack for like eight bucks at Home Depot, so it's pretty cheap. And you'll be able to glue a lot of stuff with one can of this stuff, especially the primer. The primer like never runs out. When you're doing this, if you're using primer and glue, but mainly primer, make sure to wear gloves and you'll notice it's starting to eat away at your gloves, but it won't eat through them unless you like dunk your hand in there, but don't try that. How this is gonna work is we're gonna take primer and we're gonna quickly coat each surface that we want to join. And while the primer is still wet, we're gonna slather some cement on both surfaces, just like we did with our primer. And then once you have them sort of together, you're gonna to wanna to take a mallet like this one and pound them together, because when you stick them together, sometimes they kinda of wanna separate slowly because there's like air bubbles and stuff in there. And if you leave that unnoticed, your PVC will almost completely separate. So I'm gonna start by building the lower chamber. And for that, I'm gonna start by gluing two two-inch couplers to some two-inch PVC pipe here. So like I said, I'm gonna apply primer on the front really quickly, then apply primer to our coupler, then put some glue on here, and put some glue on here, and then take them, slide it together, it should go together nicely, and you'll see it kinda wants to separate there, it's like slowly going upwards. We wanna take that, hold it down there, and usually if you tap it in with the mallet, it should stay. Okay, and then we're gonna repeat that step for the other side of our pipe here. Just like that, and as you can see, I have a lot of purple primer overlapping here, but don't worry about it, because we're gonna cover our chamber in duct tape and then spray paint it, so it doesn't really matter how it ends up looking here. Okay, so now that we have our couplers glued on either end, we can install our front reducer. Like I said earlier, it just has to reduce to one half inch threaded. It doesn't really matter how it does it, but two to one half inch threaded. I actually found a two to one half inch threaded reducer here. Really rare, found it at Home Depot, but I had to go to like three of them to actually find it. So uh, you'll most likely have to go from two to three quarters threaded, then three quarters threaded to one half threaded, which is kind of annoying. If you have that, just glue in your two to three quarters threaded reducer, and then we can use plumber's tape later and screw in our three quarters to one half inch threaded reducer. And on the other side of this, we can do our two to one half inch non-threaded reducer. And this is gonna to connect to our street elbow, which will allow you to attach your upper chamber. Now that we have our lower chamber mostly assembled, we can install our street elbow on the rear one half inch non-threaded here. 
And there we go, just like that. Okay, so for our upper chamber, we're gonna first install our two inch end cap here. And this is the one that we drilled and tapped with an M13 tap to fit our Chinese NPT slash quick release valve. And same process for all this. So now that we have our end cap in here, we can install our last coupler onto the front of this pipe. And now we can install our other two to one half inch non-threaded reducer into this coupler. And then we can take our last nine degree half inch street elbow and stick that in our two to one half inch reducer. Okay, so now that we have glued and primed our two separate chambers, our lower and our upper, we wanna let those dry for about two to three hours just so the glue has time to kind of solidify and gel. So when you duct tape it, if you accidentally touch any, it's not like super gross and gets all over you and starts eating away at your skin, cause that would be bad. So let that sit for two to three hours and then we can move on to taping them up and then gluing them together to finalize our chamber. Okay, so now that your PVC cement is at least sort of dry, you're gonna to wanna to wrap it in duct tape. So just wrap the entire chamber, but make sure not to cover any of your holes. Okay, so now that you have your two separate chambers wrapped in duct tape, your bottom and your top, you're going to want to connect them with this two inch by one half inch PVC pipe here. And for this, you're gonna need a mallet to tap it in there, and of course, your primer and glue, and then you're of course your two chambers. So the first thing you wanna do is just prime the thing, and because it's so short, prime the whole thing, so. Once your little connector piece here is primed, you can take your PVC glue and slather the inside of one of your chamber's elbows here with it, and then one side of your connector pipe here. Now we can tap it in. And now we can do the same thing for the other side. There we go, just like that. And now our chambers have officially been joined. Okay, now that our chamber is almost done, we can put on our final piece of duct tape, and this is gonna connect our front of our upper chamber and the front of our lower chamber together. So there's two ways to do this. One would just be to wrap the entire thing like this, but the problem is this leaves us a little triangle in here and dirt tends to get in there and it starts to separate, so I don't like doing that. So I'm gonna start by putting a piece of duct tape near the top of the upper chamber here and run that downwards and then spread the chambers a little bit like that so you can get into that crack just like that. And then do the same thing on this other side here. And this just helps hold your chambers together so they don't rattle around a bunch when you're running around with this thing. So now that we have that done, we can install our connections and valves. Okay, for this we're gonna need our reducer if you're using one, and you're also gonna need your quick release and some plumber's tape. So plumber's tape is like the super thin stuff and it goes in between the threads to make sure air or water doesn't escape and creates a super tight seal. So for this, you're gonna take your quick release valve and wind the plumber's tape clockwise. This is so when you screw in your valve, the plumber's tape doesn't come off. Just like that. Now that we have our valve with our plumber's tape here, we can screw that into the back of our chamber. This can be a little bit challenging at first, but just keep at it and it should start going in. So now I'm gonna take my vice grips here and just tighten this. And you wanna tighten your valve so it's tight, but not too tight because once again, these are just plastic threads. So you will strip it if you try to tighten it too far. So now that we have our valve installed, we can take our reducer if it's threaded and use plumber's tape. Otherwise, you can just glue it in. And same procedure here. Then you use your vice grips and tighten it. Okay, just like that. And now that we have that done, we are officially done with our chamber. Now you wanna let this sit and dry for at least 48 hours to ensure that your cement has completely set before installing your solenoid valve in the front and your magazine, and then finally, your handle. Okay, so now that your chamber has had a chance to dry for at least 48 hours, it's time to run a pressure test on this. And for this, you're gonna need your chamber, some plumber's tape, a solenoid valve, and something to fill your marshmallow gun. For this, I have a standard male quick release on here to plug into my air compressor. And on the under end of my tubing, I have the cheap Chinese male air compressor with a valve so you can fill it and then close it before you unplug it. 
Okay, so just a note here. First of all, you want your solenoid valve to be half inch, and that'll ensure that it can screw into your front of your marshmallow gun, and you have a good flow rate. The quarter inch solenoid valves only really work for the full auto mode on the marshmallow guns, and they don't release enough air to function on semi-auto. Also, you want to make sure your solenoid valve has a metal T here. If it doesn't, the response time on it isn't going to be enough, and when you pull your trigger, you'll drain almost all of your tank, as opposed to just shooting a few marshmallows. So you do not want ones that look like this. If they have like this little plastic T, they're terrible. Do not get these. They're a little cheaper, but totally not worth it because they're useless. Okay, so for the first step, we're going to take our plumber's tape and wrap the side of our solenoid valve with the T. So the T's here, so I'm going to wrap plumber's tape around this thread. There we go, just like that. Now that we have that plumber's tape, we can screw that in to the front of our gun here. So we're gonna start by pressurizing this guy at 20 PSI and we're going to step it up by 20 PSI increments until we reach 120 PSI. I would not suggest pressurizing it past 120 PSI just because your threads here are plastic and there's just a lot of stuff. So first I'm gonna plug in my male quick release into my air compressor. This can be a little bit challenging because there is pressure behind this. Okay, now that my air compressor hose is plugged in, I'm gonna very carefully turn down the PSI here using this control knob. And you can see this is the regulated pressure that's gonna be output, and here's the pressure in the tank. And I'm gonna leave it to rest right above 20 PSI. Okay, now I'm gonna take my male Chinese air compressor quick release here, and this is live at 20 PSI, and I'm gonna plug that into the gun. Just like that, now I'm gonna open it. You can hear a little bit of hissing. And then once it's connected, you wanna listen and feel all around the gun, especially at all the points where you screwed stuff in to see if there's any air leaking. And there doesn't appear to be, so I'm going to slowly turn up the PSI to around 40. And I'm gonna check again. And then I'm gonna skip 40 and go to 80 right now. And it seems safe at 80, so I'm gonna turn up to 100. Okay, it seems good at 100, so I'm gonna turn it up to 120. I'm gonna stop at 120, I'm not gonna pressurize it anymore. This is the maximum pressure I'm gonna pressurize this, so if it doesn't leak at this, we're good. And I don't hear any leaking, so I'm gonna close my valve here, and I'm gonna release it. You can hear the little pop, but the chamber is pressurized. Now that we have our chamber pressurized, I'm actually gonna let this sit overnight and see how much pressure is left in the morning, because all I have to do to test if there's anything in there is put around 12 to 18 volts through these two and the solenoid valve will open and release a bunch of air. Okay, so now that my chamber here is fully assembled, I'm gonna to touch it up with some spray paint and I'm gonna be using silver and black. You can color it whatever you want, but I'm just gonna coat everything in silver and then do black trim on either side here. And then for masking tape, I just use the cheapest stuff, which is this dark blue stuff. It's like super thin and really crappy, but it does its job. Make sure to use in a well-ventilated area or wear a respirator. So first we just wanna take our masking tape here and cover all holes on the gun because you just don't want spray paint in your threads here. So you wanna cover your quick release and your valve hole here. I'm just jamming tape in there because I do wanna get all of this covered in paint though. Just like that, and now we can go spray paint it. Okay, so here we have our chamber here on my spray painting stump. And for this, make sure to put it on a stump and spray paint into grass or dirt, because you do not want spray paint on concrete. It doesn't come off, this is why vandals use it. So I'm gonna do my first coat of silver on this side of the gun, and then I'm gonna let that dry for about 15 minutes, and then flip it. Okay, now that my silver paint is dry, I'm going to apply my black. There we go, just like that. And now that I have my black applied, I'm actually going to take like a brick or some four x four or something and rest the gun like this so the black doesn't touch anything and let this dry. And then we will be done with our chamber. So now that we have our chamber done, stay tuned for the next video because we will be showing you how to build your 3D printed grip with trigger mechanism, timing mechanism and such plus your magazine and frontal system. So, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to give us a like, subscribe, and see you next time.